up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Smack Draw podcast, uh, wrestling recap show, cover WWE and AEW events. I'm sorry, I'm just looking for my coaster. Um, <laughs> oh, here we go. Found it. All right. <laughs> I got a Red Bull, man. You got to have coasters. You get married, all of a sudden you care about coasters. Uh, hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Smack Drop Podcast, the Raw Recap Edition. I hope y'all are having a great morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this. Uh, my, myself, my name is Kyle Tyson. I'm joined by my awesome morning morning uh, companion, Miss Katie Katie Bay Bay. What's up? Hey, good morning. Thank good you for morning. doing this with me again. Oh, of course. Well, I don't work Tuesday mornings now, so this is this is fine. Good timing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't know if it's just my phone, but I can't see us on Twitch. Uh, no, I can see us. Okay, then it's just my phone. It's just Great. your phone. Uh, <laughs> that's actually a good little transition there. By the way, we stream live on Twitch. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash putting you over. Most of the time, uh, if streamer has a really really long running show <laughs> like he did uh full gear occasionally you can find us on our own channel which is twitch.tv slash smack podcast and of course if you miss any of the live streams uh you can find us on youtube uh same name smack Drop podcast and then uh of course the audio version is found pretty much everywhere uh podcasts can be listened to uh we have uh patreon if you want to support us uh the patreon it's all it's all the same name. Patreon.com slash SmackDrop Podcast. Uh, we do like stickers, t-shirts. I actually, I think I'm going to take today. I'm going to go into the Patreon. I'm going to kind of update it, throw a fresh coat of paint on it, you know, and, and maybe go ahead and show it some love because I haven't been on there for a while and it looks a little dated. Uh, also, after we shoot this show, uh, I got to send out uh, everybody their, their sticker packs that joined last month. Dommy savannah and caitlin yep yeah so i'm gonna go ahead thank you guys once again for uh supporting the show and uh, i'm gonna send you all some you know smack draw stickers you can you know put on your trapper keeper or whatever you put stickers on nowadays i don't know i'm fucking old trapper okay keeper. people like what stickers so I mean. <laughs> <laughs> trapper keeper oh, man. once you're uh, a dad your cool points just go way down um you hate to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Streamer got a uh, streamer plugged us on Twitter. Yeah, he's out there. He's active. Yeah, he's active this morning. That's awesome. Um, what else, Katie? Do we plug it? Oh, Wrestling News World. Tell them about Wrestling News World. Um, WrestlingNewsWorld dot com. It is a website bookmark it. <clears throat> make it your uh, home for all of your wrestling news wants and needs to check out articles podcasts and premium content Ta-da. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's the morning folks okay <laughs> oh man uh, uh, we've, we've lost everybody that's it right there we lost them <laughs> well oh. see you guys later <laughs> yeah good morning no okay so let's let's talk about raw okay um it was so I'm gonna sound like a broken record for every main roster recap between now and Survivor Series because nothing happens. It is you yep. there's little stuff here and there, but they don't do anything groundbreaking because that's reserved for the run up to Royal Rumble and then of course WrestleMania. So that yeah. stint between uh, in this case, what was it? Hell in a Cell and Survivor Series. It is just a lot of spinning your wheels, <clears> building <throat> up for the brand versus brand warfare, which, by the way, hurts the damn build so much. I'm not the the, the Raw versus SmackDown shit. It doesn't make mm-hmm. a lick of fucking sense. It, unless you don't have the draft take place. Just a few weeks prior to pitting Raw versus SmackDown, because why would any of these people have brand loyalty? They were just traded. You know, you mean to tell me that, I- like, 
fuck AJ Styles and and Matt Riddle give a shit about Raw? Oh, maybe Matt Riddle because they kind of screwed him over on SmackDown. So maybe, <laughs> but uh, but Raw took away his first name, so <laughs> yes. Yeah, so so oh, I don't know. I didn't, even, I didn't even pay attention to them calling him Riddle last night. I didn't even notice. Well, AJ kept calling him Matt Riddle, and I saw a tweet. They were like, "Oh, Vince has never given him his Twitch channel back now." <laughs> like Jesus. Well, maybe that's just AJ right there, mad because of his Twitch channel. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's yeah, pissed. He's like, "I'm calling anyone, whoever the fuck I want." Yeah, pretty much, man. No, it's just it's just because like it doesn't you know there's 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 no there's no stakes when you pit Raw versus SmackDown. It's just the mm-hmm. old bragging right stuff. Like you need you need stakes in place. When the last time we had stakes was what back in like I think it was 2016, where it was John Cena's team against like the Authority's team, and if John Cena won, uh, the <coughs> Authority were dismantled out of power. Yeah, that was yeah. that was like the last good Survivor Series, in my opinion, as far as for stakes wise, like build and drama. Yeah, not that you can't have a good match. I imagine that the pay per view itself will have fun matches. It's just the build towards it is just a fucking chore, man. It's just long and drawn out, and they can't start anything new. Yeah, exactly. Um, Awful. With that being said, there was a couple things on Raw. I like that. Uh, I do. My favorite thing so far is uh, the Raw's men's Survivor Series team dynamic. <laughs> we finally got all five members determined. And um, yeah, just the fact that everybody, uh, I guess, there's just no camaraderie. Like everybody's at each other's throats over who's the captain. By the way, Katie, Katie, what, what, uh, what authority does a Survivor Series team's captain necessarily have? You know, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think any, like, none, really. What comes with being the captain of a Survivor Series team? Apparently making team meetings. <laughs> making team meetings. <laughs> <it. laughs> you... And that's about it. Is I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Like, uh, let's see. Do you? Yeah, no. That's that's really the only thing that comes to mind. Because it's like, what happens in the match? It's not. I mean, the, the captain's in the match. He can't be. It's a tag match. It's not like a sports team where you send guys out and pull guys back. Although that yeah. would be pretty cool. Like if AJ was on the apron and uh, Strowman was in the ring, he'd be like Strowman. Tagging Seamus and Strowman had to go and tag in Seamus and shit. Okay. I can see that. I mean, cool. knowing this team, it's probably gonna happen like that. Yeah. This team's yeah. ridiculous in like the best way possible. You know the only reason why we have team captains of Survivor Series? We can thank Alicia Fox for it. Because when oh she did it, God. it was hilarious. And they had to keep going with it. They were like, okay, team captains is a thing. It's it's Alicia Fox. I believe if it wasn't for Alicia Fox, there would be no team captains. They would just be teams. Adam Pierce would be the captain of both teams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he would. Thank you, Alicia Jesus. Fox. Thank you, because now you. we have silly fucking captains. AJ and... Shayna slash Naya. Yeah. Once again, though, what perks do you get? Do you get like a bonus? Like, does your pay, you know, bonus like for the team captain of the winning team? You know. Hmm. What comes with being a captain other than saying team meeting in the room? <laughs> <laughs> like, what comes with it? You know. The pay thing sounds like it would be a thing. But just team meetings. That's all I can think of. Team meetings. Team meetings. I hate team meetings. So yeah. I mean you don't even get to design the uniform. You're gonna go out there wearing those shitty like raw and smackdown t shirts. <laughs> Could they at least do jerseys or something? Like do something more than just a plain cotton t shirt with your fucking logo on it. 
Except for Dolph like- in the hat. Dolph Ziggler rocks the shit out of a SmackDown hat. But other than that. I mean, I liked what Seth would do every year. He would, like, do half his shirt and then half raw. Yeah. That was tacky, but it was something. It was different. I mean, are you going to go out and buy that shirt? <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I wonder if you can go to WWE's like shop and purchase just generic Raw and SmackDown T-shirts. You think? I'll you, look right you now. Think you? You think you can, right? I'm going to look right now. Yeah. While you do that, I'll go ahead and kick off the show. Um, seeing as we're 11 minutes in, we ain't even talked about like <laughs> anything other than Survivor Series. <laughs> So the show kicked off with, uh, what, the Miz TV segment, right? Uh, yes. Where Miz's planned guests were the New Day, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, I love I love Randy Orton's paranoia getting to him, just wanting to be on top of everything. Because just during, during the generic Miz TV segment, Randy Orton decides to come out and just threatens Miz to cash in. Like, go ahead and just cash in. Let's do this, you know? And um, Miz being Miz, because uh, it's announced, obviously, they have the six-man tag later in the night. Miz and Morrison with Randy Orton taking on the New Day and uh, McIntyre. Uh, mm-hmm. Miz is like, no, I'm not doing this to get at you to try and get the world title. I'm trying to do this to shoehorn myself into a tag championship. Yeah. Um, in which case brought out the New Day. And then there was some back and forth. And to be honest, I don't even really remember much after that Uh you just all had all six guys in the ring, essentially, right? And yeah. hyping up the main event with nothing really being said, other than Drew McIntyre coming out, claiming that he's going to get his rematch. Uh, which, I mean, why does Drew de- like deserve a rematch? I don't he, know. Lost fa- he lost clean, right? It was, it was a clean match in Hell in the Cell. There wasn't really any, like, dirty finish it was just randy worked on his leg drew missed a claymore kick and ate an rko it was a clean loss but yeah. it is wwe so you know you That's get true. get those instant rematches can you buy them i can't find anything on the shop that's really disappointing yeah that's surprising man that's a waste it's survivor series you should definitely have those shirts up i agree what team are you gonna rock um, I think I have to go SmackDown. Really? Yeah. Mm, I'd rock Raw just because of their men's team. The men's team is awesome. Yeah, but, but I'm more intrigued about the women's SmackDown team. Yeah. Like that's that's why I'm like intrigued in it because everyone has to be announced like tonight or not tonight Jesus Friday. Well, Survivor Series is that that's not this Sunday, is it? No, that's next Sunday. Next or, Sunday or the Sunday after next? I don't I don't know. Yeah, so it's not this upcoming Sunday, but the Sunday after. So that gives you almost two shows, but you'd want your whole team established. Let's see. Some... Raw has had their team established basically for like two weeks. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they got they got their team established real quick. The women's team, the men's team was finished for this show, um, mm-hmm. and then yeah, yeah, SmackDown's women. They only have like what one woman on there right now, right? They have two: Bianca and Ruby. That's right, Bianca and Ruby. Honestly, like who who do they have? Carmella ain't gonna do it. She ain't gonna hurt. She just re debuted. She ain't gonna be on the Survivor Series team. <laughs> you know, Na- Naomi's on Raw now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy Kay, Liv Morgan. Oh, someone's here. I I was saying, did I just hear a doorbell? Yeah, I think someone's here. I think my dog got out. That's usually what happens. Oh, dog Jesus. gets out, and one of the kids in the neighborhood brings him back. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Something. I don't know. I'm kind of nervous now. Like, this is happening live right now. Someone's at my door. Uh, you go ahead, I guess, talk us through what happened. I'm going to go check. Because my wife's really iffy about answering the door for strangers. I don't blame her. Yeah, I'll be right back. 
All right, you deal with that. I'll deal with those. So next up, we had the last chance triple threat match to determine the last man for the Raw Survivor Series team. It was Elias taking on Riddle, taking on Jeff Hardy, all of whom lost their original qualifying match. I mean, uh, the match was pretty solid. Um, Elias did a lot of the work, put a lot of those hours in. (laughs) Hi, Jay. Jesus. Um, At one point... Jesus, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, Hardy hits the poetry in motion after throwing Riddle into Elias in the corner. So he hits the poetry in motion off of Riddle into Elias. Uh, Riddle ends up hitting the... What is Riddle's finish? Isn't it like the Bro Derek or bro something? Bro Derek, yeah. Uh, why are his... Why are the names so stupid? I, I mean, it's Riddle. They they were just like, Haha, stoner, bro, shoeless. Let's just go full, like, stoner lingos and stuff like that. I'm assuming that's their logic. That's not my logic. Uh, but I'm assuming that's how they look at it is just incorporate, like, try to dance as close to he's a stoner without actually saying he does illegal drugs. Which I mean, they kind of they kind of didn't. Yeah, say, which he technically doesn't even do. He used to for a long time, but he quit so he could get in the WWE, if I remember correctly. Uh, <clears throat> but they still play on it like it's his character. He's just like oh, a, yeah, I mean, just like a surfer, man. He's annoying. They need to play up his UFC history like they do Brock. I mean, mm-hmm. if if you're uh, if you if you guys are familiar with like UFC at all or MMA, or if you're not. Um, Matt Riddle has an insanely violent and scary knockout from the time he was on the Ultimate Fighter. Look up, <coughs> look up Matt Riddle uh, knockout, and he blasts this dude out of the fucking universe, man. This guy, it was, it was, it's a bad one. It's definitely a scary, scary uh, uh, knockout. Um, I can't remember why he got cut. He oh. got cut from USC for something stupid. It wasn't because he went on a losing streak. Yeah, that was part of the controversy was he was actually winning uh, his fights. I think they cut him because of the weed. Uh, but it's I, it's hard to tell. I can't remember. It's been a long time. It was it, This was ages ago. If you look, you won't even recognize Matt Riddle because he doesn't have long hair. He's got like really short hair. He looks like he's got braces. He looks like he's fucking 12. Uh, when he was a on child. Fighter. Yes, he does. He absolutely does. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, yeah, Riddle hits a Bro Derek for the win and becomes a part of Survivor Series. Yeah, dude, that team is stacked. Braun Strowman, Sheamus, AJ Styles, Matt Riddle, and Keith, Keith Lee. Lee. That's why they're doing the dysfunctional team angle. If these guys were a cohesive unit, be game no over. Point. Yeah, game over for any team. You put together, you'd have to have like a legends team. Like you'd have to have like Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, John Cena, fucking Goldberg, Brock Lesnar. Stop it! You know, stop have, it. <laughs> but that's the equivalent of the team that you need. You know, the people that like never lose. Um, although Daniel Bryan loses, he puts over the talent. Love Daniel Bryan. Oh, by the way, yeah. Uh, as far as my door goes, uh, it was it was someone. Uh, wearing a um, uh, county uniform and I guess asking my wife questions about the house. I, I'm not sure. Uh, that was that was as much of the description she gave me. And I was like, okay, well, tell them that we have really high security. <laughs> like, we got cameras everywhere. Pressure plates. You name Jesus. it. Jesus. <laughs> Pressure plates. <laughs> asking questions about my house, man. That's fucking weird. This is a spy movie all of a sudden. I'm telling you, like, I'd... I, be out there be like yo why are you asking questions but of course i have this you know youtube show that we have to shoot so crazy i know i know uh yeah matt riddle 
Last part of <laughs> yeah, the Survivor Series team. It's dope. Um, what do we get after this? Because it, because uh, like I said, I, I, I have the, the CBS notes in front of me, but I never can tell if they're in order or not. Um, The very sh- short AJ interview backstage. Oh, yeah, that's probably basically basically him saying he's happy riddle one this was the missing piece that they needed and then seamus comes over and he wants nothing to do with riddle really just wants to like bro kick him which i understand seamus don't want like nothing to do with anybody on this team no the only person he wants on the team is drew mcintyre and drew mcintyre is not on the team no which we found out why later on um yeah but uh, okay. What uh, what proceeded the backstage interview? Uh, the Ali with Retribution promo oh, backstage. Yeah, this is lame, dude. When, dude, take off the masks. Stop hyping Please up take off their the names. Masks. Like, look, you can make the stupidity of their identities work by simply addressing it head on. Like, we were forgotten, Mm -hmm. we were underused, you guys pushed us aside. Look what we had to do. We had to get these stupid masks, we had to get these stupid names to even be signed and get noticed by the WWE. And then at that point, you'd be like, Mm -hmm. this man is not T-Bar, this is Dominic Dijakovic. And he could rip his mask off, you know, and still have, like, the face paint shit. Um, But, (laughs) like, this guy puts on ace match after ace match. You know, you don't even have to mention NXT because I know WWE has a weird thing about that. But you'd be like, this guy tears the house down anytime you put him in the ring. You know, mm-hmm. this isn't this isn't Mace. This is Dio Madden, one of the hottest upstarts. You know, he confronted Brock Lesnar head on. What was his reward? You took him off TV for the last year, you know, and then you could so you can incorporate those names and make it make sense instead of trying to double down every time like you're trying to make them hit. You know, and and it doesn't, especially especially, poor Slapjack. Well, Slapjack's not gonna be taken. <laughs> it's like you know he's there to eat pins, uh, or at least you would think so, because actually Dominic T Bar ate a pin the other week, but it's fucking stupid, man. I mean, the way you just described how they should do it had me invested. So <laughs> yeah, like it would make so much sense at that point. You can you can justify the silly names and actually incorporate it into the story. But instead, mm-hmm. the best storytelling is being done by Ali on WWE exclusive like website content or on like Twitter, but it's never yeah. seeing the light of day. Anything you see actually on Raw is just the generic doubling down of retribution, which it sucks, man, because you got the talent there to make it work. You have the talent. You just have no yeah. investment in doing it. Awful. Ow. Remember, I don't know what came up next. Oh, yeah. Um, her business backstage in Gulak, who uh, <laughs> 24-7 champ, <laughs> wants to join. <laughs> Fuck, I love Gulak, man. His clip on tie. <laughs> but it makes sense. It made sense. I love how they did that. Gulak, for one, put his suit on. He put he his did. suit on, suit and tie, repping the gold, you know. I was like, oh cool. Pocket man. square. Yeah. He wants he's like, you know, I wanna I wanna join. Uh MVP says we're not accepting applications. Uh Bobby Lashley, like you said, grabs him by the tie. And it's a clip on. And then I love how MVPs like you want to step up to like the sharpest dressing. I love how MVP hypes his team up as like the cream of the crop, the primo, like premier yeah. wrestlers. And it's it's it makes them look so much better. Oh, um, yeah. But he's like, you want to step up to like the sharpest dressing wrestlers in WWE with a clip on. And then Gulak's well, he's like, well, it's, you know, tactical. You know, I got the twenty four seven. I got to be ready. You know, it it's easy, gets it easier to get away, and uh, <laughs> it makes sense. They but it makes down, sense. They, they beat his ass down. Our truth was hiding in the wings. 
um, pinned him. Damn it. There was a stagehand that walked by. I thought for sure some random no-name stagehand was about to pin Gulag. Oh, did I? <laughs> but instead it was Archie. And uh, yeah, Archie got his baby back. 33, right? 33, 34. For- 43. 43. Jesus Christ. 43. <laughs> And that's yeah. not even getting to the match later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. No, um, I didn't. <laughs> uh, okay. So I think I might have this lined up now. Let me take a stab at it. Is it the the Lana, Shayna Baszler stuff? It is. All right. I'm back on track. Hey. Hey. Um, no. It, Lana and Shayna Baszler had a match. Lana obviously and and justifiably nervous to come out to the <laughs> ring <laughs> um she uh has a match with Shayna Baszler uh you have a uh, uh Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke on commentary and mm-hmm. uh essentially i mean it was it was it was what it was it shows Lana trying to fight you know obviously can't get anything more than like one punch or a kick in and then obviously she gets she gets choked out uh yeah. care to clutch Nia Jax comes out they're about to put it through the commentary table however uh Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose stick up for her and and prevent it uh which at this point social media was like is the streak broken this and that and uh, yeah I was like, like guys like, nice dude, thought over yeah we have a long night ahead of us <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> but um yeah i think you and i are the only ones that like try to call out like it's not a full streak there was a gap on week like three or something <laughs> there was a gap because it was the, the monday after yeah it was after clash she didn't get put through a table that monday yeah. but then the following monday was like the second or third time she was put through the table they stayed home due to a covid scare and there is a week in there. It didn't happen. So it's not a streak. It's not. You can count the streak just, afterwards, but they're counting how many times. They're like, that's not an accurate number. That's inaccurate. It's inaccurate. That's false. That's that's false information. Mm-hmm. I'm suing everyone. And you wonder why people don't trust WWE storytelling. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so what happened with Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss? Oh, you're oh, you jumped. Okay, never mind. All right, it's it's not in chronological <laughs> order anymore. Go ahead. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn! There, um, the team meeting happened next. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, let's talk about these code names real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck! I I only remember Skipper and Fireface. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. So Riddle, you know, newest member of Raw's like. You know what's going to make us win? Sick ass code names. <laughs> so, <laughs> AJ is the skipper, of course. Um, f- he called himself Dopey, which no one's surprised. Um, Seamus was fire phase. Oh, fuck. See, it's, I got oh, him in front. I do have him in front of me. Braun was Mongoose. <laughs> Mongoose. Which, that's so weird because Mongoose are known for being ferocious little animals not big not yeah not like giant it's weird man and then keith lee was bro lee oh jesus yeah um yeah seamus seamus was actually the one that dubbed uh matt riddle uh dopey like what what's, what's your code name dopey and riddle was like yeah man how'd you know <laughs> freaking stoner face galore too he was Jesus so happy seamus is like why are you calling me Fireface? is it because i have red hair is that what you're playing on he's like no when you get angry your face turns red kind of like it is right now <laughs> i mean again where's the lie <laughs> aj says i got a plan I got a plan. We're going to get you guys to respect each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Seamus and Braun Strowman going to take on uh, Riddle and Keith Lee. And I'm going to be a special referee. I'm going to call it down the line. You guys are going to fight. And you're going to get respect for one another. And uh, so they end up having a match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, they kicked off a tag match between the two teams. They We're cut. just ignoring the fact that you just did a full as southern accent. Are we ignoring <laughs> this? <coughs> oh my god, that was great. Thank you. But, uh, I hear it's flat, alright? I don't want to hear no arguments about it. But, uh, well, anyways, tag match. Tag good. match. <laughs> Oh my god. I think I broke Katie over there. I, I think, think you I did. You, I think you break me every time we do a podcast. <laughs> oh my god. It just caught me so off guard I wasn't prepared for it. Yeah, well you live in if you live in the South long enough, you pick it up. Plus well, AJ's is very South. stereotypical. Yeah. His his like you just his is a very he doesn't really add much nuance to the accent. It's just his. It's just southern twang. Southern twang. He, you could double his accent for um, almost for uh, our boy Sebastian. Although Sebastian's, I think, is thicker. It's yeah. Yeah, Sebastian's is thicker. But uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, this tag match was a uh, was was pretty good. We got a tease of AJ's bodyguard because uh, at one point. AJ, what, he got crushed between, like, Braun and Keith Lee or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then AJ's bodyguard threatened to come in the ring and do something, but they didn't. I wonder how they long they got to a commercial. Get... Yeah, it was a commercial break. Like, oh my god, he's gonna do something. Commercial break. And then we cut back yeah. and he's back outside. Yeah, what the fuck? The, the commentary could have been like, oh my god, I can't believe you see that? He did a shooting star press. <laughs> it's <laughs> <of Roblox. laughs> They should have just played it up like like he's this incredible wrestler. <laughs> we missed it. That we never course. get to see. Yeah. Oh, that'd be a fun running joke. Um. <laughs> book it. Yeah. Someone book it now. Um. Uh, Keith Lee ends up picking up the win though, in in this match once again with uh Bro Derek again. I think. Mm-mm. No, Riddle rolls up Sheamus. Ah. Yes. Uh, you have to forgive me. I was in and out. Jessica was showing me Dancing with the Stars stuff, and I paid way too much attention to that shit than I should have. <laughs> Plus, the Patriots game was going on at the same time, so I did miss some of the match. I mean, it was just a lot of shenanigans. Yeah. Um, I wonder what will bring them together. You think You think SmackDown invades Raw, and then they, they fend off SmackDown, and that's how they're a cohesive unit? Or do you think no. this goes all the way to the pay per view? It's going all the way to the pay per view. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Probably. on the SmackDown's team right now? You have you got Jay Uso and Kevin Owens. Do we have anybody else? Corbin and Rollins. Corbin and Rollins. Who's gonna be the fifth member? I don't know. Hmm. I wonder if they'll do it kinda like what they did uh well, in the triple threat match uh, with that we had with uh, Riddle, even I'm doing it without saying Matt Riddle now. Um, mm-hmm. Riddle, Jeff Hardy, and Elias. Elias. Were any of those? Did any of those guys lose qualifying matches? Yeah, I think they all did. They all did, right? Yeah. Okay. You think they'll do the same thing on SmackDown? Because that could give Daniel Bryan a second chance to get on the team. True, because it was Daniel Bryan. Otis and I don't know who else was like a qualifier. Ray Mysterio lost to Seth. Yeah, I'd like to see Daniel Bryan, and then you have the dynamic of him and Jay on the same team. There's there's a lot of tension on that team. Yeah, there is, but not not fun tension like Ross. <laughs> yeah, Ross. It's oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, Seth Seth Rollins mix having Jay Uso right there. Right next to like Roman Reigns, that's going to be interesting if they decide to play on that at all. Um, Probably not. And then, like I said, if you get Daniel Bryan in that mix, that'd be really cool. Um, Corbin's there, just yeah, Corbin. <laughs> Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> who, who did Corbin beat again? No, Corbin beat Ray. Corbin. Beat yeah, Ray. Corbin beat Ray. Seth beat Otis. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, SmackDown's team isn't as exciting. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Theirs is more dramatic. Raw's is more entertaining. Which is weird. That's, it's that's very really, weird. Yeah, that's really odd, man. 
say Raw is entertaining. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Next is your Bliss and Nikki Cross. Yeah. Um, Nikki, like, finally comes to Alexa Bliss. Like, I'm sorry I've been waiting so long to, uh, to, uh, help you you know or whatever but it's time choose me or me or the fiend and i was like dude that's out of left field nikki that's the f- aggressive yeah, nikki, like, Jesus. The fuck have you been? like i get it if you've been there like every week and getting pushed over you're like oh i just took like a three-month vacation i'm back now so you're gonna drop everything you're doing and you've been doing and we're gonna hang out again and do more uh moment of bliss together and yeah yeah that was that was essentially her fucking argument and bliss Basically. doing the weird like my wife says it's like play on like harlequin and i was like that's more the look but she does like the weird child innocent fucking yeah bravado blows some petals in nikki's face and i was like i choose him teehee <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> i don't know yeah my wife says the they have like a joker harlequin relationship i was like man that's really like they had like a really joker and harlequin had like an extremely abusive relationship yes. you don't really see that with the fiend aesthetically i get it aesthetically i i they look the part yeah but, uh, but not not their actual like chemistry i'm trying to think of like uh way like a, a couple to compare them to because they're not even like it doesn't even seem like they're romantically entwined it's more or less she's like a follower of his yeah try to think i don't know Hmm. did any of the saw movies (laughs) have jesus (laughs) like one or two of them had like a woman who took up the mantle for jigsaw right i i actually just watched these recently i think so yeah because because i What's his name was really he didn't actually any like ever like get his hands dirty. He was just a leader and got helped everyone else do it. It's weird. I don't know. What about Charles Manson? You think they have a Charles Manson and cult following type dynamic? Once again though, Charles Manson never did the deed himself where the fiend does. The fiend leads by example. Mm. Hmm. That's a that's a good analogy though. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. You you really pulled out Charles Manson at eleven a.m. Or, <laughs> good morning. Or what about what about uh? Have you ever seen um? You ever seen House of a Thousand Corpses or The Devil's Rejects? I think like a long time ago. Brutal ass Rob Zombie movies, but they're actual family. They're like literal family, but they're like a yeah. murderous family. I don't know. Love that. <laughs> What what dynamic? We'll ask we'll ask the crowd at this point. Or Matt Ritter, he he's usually good to respond. Uh, what um, what dynamic do the Fiend and Alexa Bliss have? Like compare to in like pop culture. But, okay, that's that's enough fantasizing over that shit. <clears throat> Is this the her business stuff that came up after this? Yeah, Lashley and MVP coming out. Hell yeah! Talking about how Cedric and Benjamin get a title shot next week because they pinned New Day clean. Yeah, last week and then titus o'neill comes out <laughs> yo when his music hit i sat there for a minute ago where do i recognize this music from <laughs> me too i was like why does this sound so familiar <laughs> <laughs> like whose music is this again like i know i know it and fucking titus o'neill you're like oh yeah forgot they're still burying you like five years later <laughs> like dude a poor man easily easily one of a, probably the biggest current role model you have on your roster and you yeah. treat him like trash on screen week in and week out just because he grabbed vince mcmahon's forearm one time and fucking <laughs> lifetime burial right there lifetime burial and he's and he's like wins like humanitarian rewards every year, like father of the year and shit. Yeah. I know. But no, bury him on TV. Yeah. No. He uh he he got beat by Bobby Lashley. He was he was doing okay. He got speared and fucking hurt locker. Hurt lock. Um <laughs> But uh yeah. It's a shame. I mean, it was an impromptu uh United States title match too. Yeah, yeah. I mean how 
How crazy would that have been? Titus O'Neil. I was like, there's no way. (laughs) Yeah. That dude will lose a 24-7 match. (laughs) He'd lose a 24-7 title match. Although I think he's technically the first 24-7 champion. Uh, If you go, because remember they did the scramble when Mick Foley debuted it. The first person to touch the belt was deemed champion. I believe that was Titus. I think it was. Yeah, but before the segment was over, it had traded hands like thirteen times, and I think nobody's was, surprised. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't on. It wasn't on Titus anymore. Jesus. Um. Then we got the brief Drew McIntyre Sheamus backstage. Yeah, they should have. It would have been awesome to see. McIntyre on the team although at that, at that point I mean it's it would have felt like a wrap it would have been like yeah there's, n- there's nothing Smackdown can put together I uh, yeah. it honestly already feels like that but in my opinion I don't think Smackdown can unless the team implodes and all turn yeah. on each other like it feels like Smackdown has a are shaping up for a clean sweep in those two matches t- to get swept out which wouldn't surprise me because you, they've done it before. They they have done it before. What year was it that uh that Raw clean swept SmackDown with the exception of like one pre show match, and it only got released that the Booker of the pre show match got it mixed up. Like they intended Raw to win every single match. Oh, that was like two years ago, I think. I I remember New Day was on the pre show and they won. Yeah, and, they, and they, they hung on to that. They were like, because they wouldn't acknowledge the one win SmackDown had. Um, I'm going to attempt to look it up. All right. While you do that, uh, was it the Oscar Nia Jack stuff? Yes, it was. Okay. So we get a uh, championship match uh, between Oscar and Nia Jax. These two met each other at NXT. They always, they actually have some pretty good chemistry uh, between Oscar just having this relentless um striking chipping away at naya and then submission attack while naya is like you know running and trying to like punch a brick wall uh and uh but they have a good match uh towards the end though oscar is putting in the oscar lock i believe and at that point Shayna baszler comes in uh gets naya jacks dq'd by jumping oscar uh at some point during this scramble is what led to lana I think coming out or something, but Lana, this is where Lana got put through the table. Uh, Yeah, they kept the streak going. It's not a streak. (laughs) (laughs) It just happens to be eight out of nine times. Huh? Uh, Eight out of nine times, I think. What year was it? Eight out of nine weeks. Oh, Oh, uh, oh, you're talking about the... I'm I'm sorry, you're talking about... We were talking about two different things, but... (laughs) um, The Survivor Series playing sleep was uh, 2018. 2018 yeah it's two years Damn, ago it felt way longer than that it's fucking covid man covid got like stuff that happened last year feeling like a decade ago yep um or maybe that's just the year 2020 it's a combination of the whole thing uh yeah garza still trying to make love to women through tv he's really trying to figure that shit out um uh it's 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 kind of odd i don't know it's this is what you had for Garza, the the like one this, guy. This was the plan. <laughs> this is the guy. Like you, out of out of Zelina, Andrade, Garza, you were like, okay, we're gonna push Garza. Well, what's he gonna do? Well, he's gonna he's gonna fuck women through the for, through the television screen. You know, <laughs> that's that's his thing. He's gonna try and seduce women, not not by doing like sexy things, just just talking talking to the camera that's that's what he's doing like garza hit on women through a camera (laughs) probably just like okay (laughs) yeah garza pull it off though uh (laughs) didn't warren hayes or someone tweet they were like i'd like to picture that angel garza's talking to me (laughs) i think it was warren i could be wrong i'll have to i'll have to go back and look um (laughs) Warren Hayes is fucking awesome, you guys. If you get a chance to, watch the Warren Hayes show. Um, yeah. But uh, he's on YouTube. Uh, so we have uh, the 24-7 championship match, right? 
Is that what came after yeah. this? Okay. Uh, and it was a seven way match. Uh, you had, uh, let me see here. This this hurts, but you had obviously R Truth, Akira Tozawa, uh, fucking Eric. He's in the twenty four seven scene now. Drew Gulak, um, Tucker. That's where he landed. No surprise there. Um, Grand Metal League, Lindsay Dorado. Am I missing anybody? Ruth Gulak. Uh, yeah, you got everyone. Okay. Yeah, this was just a scramble. People um, pinning each other after just pin after pin uh, because what it was it was the the match technically ended like there was a there was a winner and then everybody just kept pinning each other right yeah um i think i think uh you have right here on cbs sports i think they have it in this order uh they said uh there was nine title changes in the segment before our truth managed to escape uh mm -hmm. the orders went in, then follows uh tazawa defeated truth eric yep. defeated tazawa drew gulag mm -hmm. defeated eric Tucker mm -hmm. defeated Gulak. Gulak defeated Tucker. Tucker defeated Gulak. Metalik defeated Tucker. Then Dorado pinned Metalik. And then, of course, Truth came in, pinned Dorado, and then took off. Um, once again, so much payoff to splitting up tag teams and trios. Otis, Otis, and Ivar, what happens? Otis loses a Survivor Series. Otis quality. and Tucker. Otis and Tucker, excuse me. Jesus. Otis loses a uh, Survivor Series tag match. Tucker goes to the 24-7 title picture. Okay. We need tag teams, by the way. Just just as a heads up, WWE. Um, what, what happens when you break up the Lucha House Party? Kalisto goes to SmackDown. Does nothing. And Grand Metalik and Dorado uh, now in the 24-7 picture. Eric and Ivar, I mean, it's unfortunate. You know, Ivar's out injured. Yeah. But all you can do with Eric, who looks like a beast of a human, um, <laughs> he's in a 24-7 match. Uh, it's, it hurts, man. <laughs> you... When when I saw him in the ring, I was like, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird that you look like him. Uh, it's fucking weird. Now that the goatee's finally coming in again, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was like... I had a, I did a double take, like swear to God. I was like, no, what? Yeah, I, I was joined... like, Kyle's not covered in tattoos. That's that's funny. Yeah, I got a couple. You have a few, but you're not like covered oh, like God. Eric is. <laughs> Mustafa <laughs> Ali defeated Ricochet. Um, it was no cape match. Uh, it was uh, retribution just hurts every time they're on screen. <laughs> just like it's. You, they cut up the ring with a chainsaw. All right, <laughs> recall. I recall this. <laughs> what happened to the chainsaw, man? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it was part of the contract. I, can you stop bringing a chainsaw to the ring? <laughs> <laughs> can you? Can you stop, please? <laughs> yes. I don't know. Yeah, they're allowed. They were given permission to run roughshod over the WWE. Essentially, they were signed with no limits. And they decide to beat up people who are already losing matches. <laughs> um, I will say this, though. Uh, Ali did do some cool stuff with uh, continuity and the hacker stuff. So the one time the hacker played a significant role was on SmackDown uh, <laughs> discovering uh, Sonya Deville turning on... Otis, like doing the whole thing with the Otis stuff. Oh yeah, right. So it was people who harmed Otis. Is the was the original motif of the hacker? Well, uh, you had Tucker turn on Otis, and then of course last week they jumped both Tucker and Ricochet. Well, in Raw talk after the show, Ali went ahead and tied it all together that 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 was the reason they attacked Tucker. Uh, in that brawl was for him turning his back on Otis and betraying his partner. So they, they you know, Ali, uh, WWE did not do this. That was all <laughs> no, Ali. He, he made the continuity stick, which was, it was kind of nice. Um, But yeah, uh, Ali won with the Koji clutch. 
Yeah. It was a good match, though. It was a good match. I mean, you got Ali and, and Ricochet. How can they not have good matches? It's, exactly. They just don't win anything of significance. You're like, you don't do... I mean, Ali's barely hanging on. I mean, it's his, it's his social media presence and everything he does off the screen is what making mm-hmm. this guy a big deal. It's it's a damn shame. Yeah. Would you th- and after this it was the main event, right? Yeah. Yeah. You go ahead. I mean, the the main takeaway from the six man tag was Orton didn't want to be tagged in at all. <laughs> Miz and Morrison both kept trying, and he's just standing there. He's like, "No, I don't want it. I don't want. I don't want in the match." I mean, at one point towards the end, Drew McIntyre finally gets tagged in reckon Miz and Morrison like he can because he's Drew McIntyre hits the feature shock DDT on Morrison throws Morrison into the corner <laughs> and is that. begging Randy call him a bitch a few times <laughs> he's like don't be a bitch tag yourself in <laughs> Randy said no gets off the apron takes his title walks up the ramp uh, McIntyre ends up hitting the Claymore while looking or dead in the eyes Pins Morrison and Ryan's. Ta da! Yeah. It was good. Um, like I said, at least they're portraying Randy Orton intelligently. The man True. knows, like, look, this is a six man tag and you got fucking Drew McIntyre over there. All it would take, you know, is to get laid out by a Claymore kick and what stops Miz from cashing in. You know, it makes sense. Um, I don't find it cowardly. I, I find that, like, fucking. In this case, like, yeah, why would you want to put yourself at risk when you have somebody right next to you at any point can declare himself eligible to pin you for the title? So, but yeah, that's true. That was raw. Like I said, my favorite part was everything around the Survivor Series team, the fucking men's team. <laughs> Too bad they don't have like, they probably don't have the time or the effort, but I could imagine some really funny shit they do, like between shows and put like on Twitter and stuff. Just, just you know, just it's simple humor. It's simple comedy to have like team the building exercises. Yeah, yeah, team build. There you go, therapy sessions. You know, the team bring ha- back Doctor Shelby. Yes, <laughs> you know, um, you could even play up like uh, fucking Matt Riddle's like little stoner thing, where he just like like come on, bros, let's just hang out in this room. We'll be best of friends. And then they fucking, they just, it just shows them all walk into a room, a door closes, and then it's like 30 minutes later. And they all come out fucking implying that they're stoned. And they're like hugging, like, I don't know why we're fighting, man. You know? <laughs> but you have like a it's paranoid an- Braun Strowman in the background. <laughs> it's just an episode of that 70s show. Yeah, there you go, man. It's just implied. <laughs> it's, you just do that shit online, man. It'd be awesome. It's not canon. Oh my god! <laughs> They're in Florida. Well, it's not legal in Florida. I don't think it is. I don't think. No. In anyways, WWE would never want to <laughs> have that on them. But yeah, that was wrong. Thank you guys yeah. for joining us. Um, <laughs> if you like, if you like what you see or hear. Like, subscribe, share. Um, we're trying to get to 200 subs on YouTube, so please head over to YouTube, subscribe. Uh, of course, uh, leave a, a rating or review if you're listening on the podcast stuff. Uh, let us know. Reach out to us um, on Twitter at SmackDrawPod. Uh, myself at the Kai Tai Show. Katie at Katie Rasslin13. Uh, let us know what you think of the show. You know what I mean. Reach out to us. Let us know how you watch. You know exactly. I'd like to know uh, how people consume this show. Whether it be yeah. YouTube or what platforms they're using on the podcast, so that's that'd be cool, man. Let us know how you actually listen to us. Um, but uh, of course, until next time, you guys have a good one. Bye. Uh oh, wait, I think I fucked up. Oh no. Oh no. Oh shit.